Today's lesson we're going to talk about interiors. The same rules apply. This, we're looking for the same things. Uh, separating the planes. There's planes inside of interior. Anything that's vertical or flat or slanted is going to be a different plane. Uh, the only difference is we don't have a sky plane inside. But we're still looking for a color temperature, strong contrast, light direction. But we're looking at a different subject and sometimes it helps to see the same aspects in a different subject or even a different medium sometimes. Uh, but we will kind of think through that process working through interiors. Today we're going to take a look at interiors. Of course different than a landscape. Obviously it's inside instead of out. But the same things apply. So it's looking at the same things we're trying to study. Shadow pattern, separating the planes, warm and cool color temperature, but it's inside as opposed to out. I think the key is to have some uh, contrast to it, some strong light. Don't try and paint them while well, you can if you want, but the more subtle the light, the harder it is. It's, you're more concerned with real subtle value variations instead of finding that big shadow pattern, in this case the simple light pattern, and start breaking up the plane. So first thing we always do then is look at the photograph and see how we want to chop it up. But what I like is you know the window and light on the ground right in here maybe a little bit of this stuff too. So I want to lose a lot of this wall. Painful to lose some things but in the long run the painting always looks better when you can simplify. My goal here is to capture the light coming in the window, hitting the ground, hitting the chickens, and then the variations of shapes and values. Just like landscape, if I can keep this big abstract shapes, it's going to work better. And I want a value difference from this plane, the flat plane, to the vertical. The flat plane in this case is darker, and I might push it even a bit darker, you know, a bit more, just to create contrast. Not a ton. Everything's in shadow except for you know, this area and a little bit up there. So, And then I want to really push the temperature. It has to be real warm because sunlight is coming in there, but it's, there's also distance back in there. So I would block in a warm yellow-orange in that entryway and then um, scrub in some violet because it's warm but it's not straight cad yellow. If I knock down the brightness a lot of times you can see what's outside, but not enough there to worry about it by making everything less brighter. And I want to push temperature. The floor is obviously cool, but it's not a straight violet. In other words, it's not as cool as, you know, that. That's real cool. Actually, it's a little grayer than I thought. I was looking for bright. That's cool, real intense. I want a very muted, something like this, only lighter. So deoxazine purple, a little bit of yellow would work real well on that. Now same thing here. This is cool also, this wall, but there is some yellow and orange in it. But go with the value and temperature first and then put it in. Same thing with this wall, all this back in here. It's dark and it is cool. It has to be cool because it's in shadow. So the color of shadow is blue, blue-violet. But then there's the color of the wall, which is orange. And I would scrub the orange in on top of the violet. Now looking at some other ones. This is the uh, same barn area. Not as much direct light. And I would want to crop it probably right in here. So I don't have to have the whole door in there. You know, it gives the idea of space if I can let it run off. Uh, then I don't have to have this whole wall on the right in there either. I mean, there's things I liked. I like that fence on the right side, but it's not going in there. Now, what I can do also is have a little bit of sunlight coming in here from a window that's not there, obviously, but out of sight, and have a bit of sunlight here, a little bit of sunlight inside the barrel, and hitting a few things, which would be not that difficult to do because all the other values are set up. It would be very similar to this. You know, if the sunlight wasn't there, you would have pretty much all this same stuff. It's just adding the sunlight. It affects the shadow a little bit. It makes it look a little cooler because the sunlight is there. So I would want to do that also. But that's a nice composition. Same thing with this one. A lot of lights, you know, coming through the cracks. 
one big light source coming this way and hitting the hay bales. A lot of variations of violets, yellow ochre, yellow orange. It's kind of a violet, uh, yellow, orange uh, color scheme almost. Not a lot of strong contrast and a lot of uh, variation. That real dark pat or the dark shape of all the hay with a definite light pattern hitting it on there pretty strong. Then you have the added elements of the real strong perspective with these boards. And I would get these boards to increase that feeling of perspective. Get them a lot wider when it comes closer to the viewer. It just increases the perspective. Because again, our canvas is flat, so the more I can suggest that, the better. Now this one is not an interior per se, but inside the porch is. And again, we want to crop. This would make maybe a better vertical, kind of vertical rectangle. I don't need the bush in there. It's way too close and it's way too big. I don't need this end, this left side of the picture. Not much there, and it's just adding more space, which makes the focal point get smaller. Now this increases the size of the focal point, makes it bigger. And even though it's not real strong direct sunlight, I would still increase the shadow a little bit more. In other words, there's a cast shadow there, an edge of a shadow, and I'd get it darker. I wouldn't necessarily get it that dark, but I would make it a bit stronger so it looks more definite and maybe darken these a bit more. That's a little strong with the purple. It needs some yellow in it to gray it. So let's go with the idea of an orange and a blue. If I go with orange, a little bit of blue in it because it is a cool shadow, but warmth is added to it to gray it. And that's better, but it's too light. Trying to increase the contrast, that's a bit better, and then it can get darker as it goes back. Because it is a gradual, I've got about three values there. Of course, they're blended on your canvas to make it go back, but that would just create more contrast. And I can always add more color in these uh, walls. In other words, if, if I kind of like the yellow, yellow, orange glow inside the shadow, I would scrub that right on top of the muted violet. This is a little too gray, what I've put down in there, but value-wise, you can see it increases the uh, contrast so that if I do that, you can see the difference. It just makes it look more sunlit because I've increased the contrast. Haven't really changed too much, just push the values a bit more. Same thing in here, just get stronger edge, a little darker, dark accents, it just creates a bit more contrast. Here the sky also goes blank and I want it to be a temperature. And it's probably a, a looks like a, an overcast day, but somewhat a little bit sunny, not totally overcast. Kind of hazy, I guess, is what it would be. Um, not enough sunlight for real bright sunlight, but it's not a clear blue sky either. But I think a um, muted blue sky would give me a lot more contrast. So if I had a that makes everything else pop out a bit more because this stuff is not competing with the sky now because down here is now the lightest where before it wasn't it was you know the sky is just as light as the ground and uh, you want to change that up anyway that creates more contrast a little more variation and we're, we're doing the same thing we're just trying to create different we're, we're trying to see the same aspects of painting but just a different subject matter inside instead of outside but the walls are verticals like trees. You still have the flat plane like the floor. Uh, this is a painting by Rembrandt. It was uh, Birth of Christ. You can see the strong contrast. Simple light shapes. It's an overall dark painting. You can almost start more with this value. Tone the whole canvas with it. Maybe a little bit thicker and then just paint into it. Because everything kind of comes out of the darkness. Then the strongest light is right there course and creating the real strong contrast around the figures. So it's very well designed, all these angles and lines going different directions. And not much, well of course there's no color. It's uh, probably black and yellow ochre with a little bit of red. But very, very strong because of the contrast. Now this is a painting by Bernard Dunstan. He was a British figure painter, did a lot of interiors. You can see all the broken color. 
his shapes and edges between objects are just, they're not there. He doesn't worry about outlines. It's a real kind of a soft transition from one shape to the other, but a lot of broken color. And that's what I like about his work. It still works real well. Big, strong, simple designs of all these values and shapes. Very abstract looking, but very, very effective. And obviously he can draw, but having the drawing look very tight is not his goal here at all. It's usually, it, it's mostly using broken color to break up the shapes. But still, it has a simple design to it that works real well. You can Google his name and look at his work. Another British painter by Ken Howard. See the difference? Flat, real simple shapes. And here it's broken up shapes. They're both real effective. This is real strong. This is a, you know, most of his paintings are a basic block in. The simple dark and light of all the shapes. He's suggesting the light from the window, how it affects everything in just real simple values. No finish or anything past the block in. And that's what I mean when I say you can stop at any point when you have everything blocked in and all the values and colors relate well with each other. You can stop at any point after that. And this is another one of his. It doesn't blow up real big. Again, another uh, backlit figure interior. But again, big, simple shapes. Not concerned with detail at all. There was one other photo I put in, and it's a figure at a table, but I could turn this curtain into a wall. I do like the yellow wall. And then just get a value change as it gradually moves towards the window. And of course, I'd be blending this if it was paint. And then it lighter as it goes towards the window and then darker as it goes towards the uh, left side of the painting. But again, the light's coming in the window. It's hitting the figure real strong. Indirect light on the cup and the flowers, but the shadows. And again, I wouldn't hesitate to emphasize these shadows just a bit stronger. It's not direct light that gives us real hard shadows, but really push those. Just like all the shadows in here, you want to push them. You can always come back later and soften them. But if you don't establish them as a definite dark and light, things are going to look mushy. And that's the problem on days or days like this where there's no direct sunlight. In this case, there's no direct light on the table. It's indirect light. We try and replicate this softness too much and things get too mushy. So block it in with stronger, harder edges between the dark sunlight. But again, this is indirect light. It's not. This is the only direct sunlight you can see. That's direct sunlight hitting her shoulder and her arm, but it's just indirect sunlight, just basic light filtering in from the window that's hitting the table, the cup, the flowers, and so on. And of course, just like all the rest of them, this can be cropped also, and that would work pretty good. Little painting hanging on the wall here would kind of balance it off, but the wall's a little bit empty. Not the whole painting, let it run off the top or the side, but that would make a nice interior too.